What's up you guys? I'm Jasper and this is JJ Vids. Welcome back to the channel. Today's video we're going to be going over the Lexus IS300 platform but in particular we're going to be going over transmissions that were offered in these cars right here because Lexus offered the IS300 in both a sedan and a wagon body style but the sedans were offered in a five-speed automatic and a small amount of them were offered in a five-speed manual where the wagons were all offered in automatics and no manuals were made but this car right here is a manual transmission and I'm also going to be explaining you guys how I swapped this car into a manual and whether or not it's even worth it to do a manual swap on these cars so stay tuned so let's go over the platform of this car right here because this car was offered in many different countries and regions and even named different names depending on which region you're in but in america this car is the lexus is 300 they never made any other car other than the is 300 at least in america and the is 300 has a three liter naturally aspirated inline six motor in it which is why it's called the is 300. now in canada japan australia europe and other regions they offered the is 200 which is a two liter motor which is smaller than this car right here and uh, they never offered that car in America but that car came in a manual transmission in the wagons and the sedans alike they had the Toyota Altezza which was pretty much the same thing as IS 200 or IS 300 but it was rebadged as a Toyota and it was renamed as an Altezza for the Japanese market now as for the IS 300 wagon or sport cross these cars in the United States as an IS 300 were never offered from the factory in a five-speed manual transmission these cars were only offered in the five-speed automatic which means that if you want one of these cars right here in manual you'll have to either swap it yourself or you'll have to buy one that's already swapped into a manual a lot of different transmissions that people use to swap these cars from automatic to manual transmission and the two most common transmission swaps you're going to find are either the w55 manual transmission swap or the w58 manual transmission swap and the w55 transmission is the same transmission found in all the is 300 oem manual cars so if you want to go as close to oem as possible with this manual swap the transmission you're going to want to go with is the w55 transmission but the second most common swap to find in these cars is the w58 transmission and that transmission can be found in mark 4 super Supras, non-turbo Supras or Lexus SC300 five-speed models and there are a few other transmissions that people go with like the Nissan 350Z uh, transmission which is six-speed transmission and that one's code name the CD009 transmission and that one's a little bit harder to swap in because you'll need to get a bell housing adapter and a few extra things to actually get that transmission fitted into this car and that's another reason why the W55 and the W58 manual transmissions are so much more common is because those transmissions are direct bolt-on to the IS 300 and then there are two more transmissions that people use like the R154 transmission which is another transmission found in the non-turbo Mark IV Supra but the difference between the R154 and the W55 and W58 transmissions is that the R154 is much bigger it's much more bulky and it can handle a lot more power but it shifts a lot less nice than the W55 and the W58 and it's basically just a different type of transmission for a different type of purpose but the Grand Master daddy transmission that people want to go manual with these cars with is the Getrag V160 six-speed transmission from the turbocharged Mark IV Supra and that transmission is the godfather transmission for this car and that's the one that everyone wants to go with because that transmission can hold monster power it's six-speed and it fits really well in this car right here but those transmissions are north of 10 grand nowadays and that's a little bit out of my reach for right now eventually I will go V160 but right now I'm W55 in this car but I want to show you guys underneath the hood in this car and show you you guys how I kind of swapped this car into manual so taking a look underneath the hood of the IS 300 Sport Cross like I said before all Lexus IS 300s were offered with the three liter naturally aspirated inline six motor producing about 200 horsepower and 220 pound-feet of torque that's the same motor we have in this uh, 
configuration right here as well. But if we take a look at this thing, um, it looks for the most part pretty OEM. We do have a few different things going on like the intake, the uh, full aluminum Mishimoto radiator, but the majority of the manual transmission components in this car, at least under the engine bay, were, is going to be located on this side of the engine bay. And the first thing I want to touch on is the ECU, which is located right here. And basically, you have to swap in a manual transmission ECU in order to run this car the correct way when you actually do the manual swap. So we have a manual transmission an ECU right here and then we also have a bunch of componentry right here and all this this piece right here these lines these brackets this thing all contributes to the manual transmission swap and there are a few things that are really hard to find with these manual transmission swaps like these two brackets right here because you can only find these two brackets from a manual transmission sedan donor car you cannot buy these parts from Lexus or from any aftermarket place nobody makes this so pretty much what a lot of people will look for when looking at these manual swaps to see if you did it legit is to see if this bracket right is you know in place right there and intact which it is and if this bracket wasn't here basically you would just have this little bracket to hold this thing right here but as for this thing it would just uh, I, I don't know what this is it kind of looks like a horn but it would just be dangling or you would have to zip tie it and just kind of like secure it some other way if you didn't have this bracket but didn't have to do that because we do have the OEM brackets and then we do have the um, the slave right here which um, connects to the um, obviously the OEM clutch pedals I have down here as well but going back into the hood I can't really explain all of the the components that are in this place right here. I'm not a mechanic, so I'm not gonna try and explain something I don't know too much, but I do know that all these hoses right here all contribute to the manual transmission swap. And as you can see, we do have a little red um, cord going from basically the ECU over through the firewall to the gauge cluster of this car. And basically what that wire is for is to ensure that we don't have any check engine lights because when you do the swaps on these cars, there's this thing called the speed sensor. And if you don't hardwire the speed sensor from the new manual transmission ECU, to the gauge cluster, then you're always gonna have a check engine light when you run this car. And I didn't wanna have a check engine light, so that's the reason why I ran that extra um, line there as well. But I'm gonna welcome you guys on into the interior of this car, where I'm gonna kind of explain a lot of the manual transmission componentry I have in here, because I do have a lot. So basically, in manual transmission conversions, there's four pretty substantial components you need to have. So first off is the manual transmission gauge cluster. And the reason why this gauge cluster is different from an automatic gauge cluster is because we don't have a screen at the bottom right there showing us our drive, neutral, reverse, etc. It's just a, a security light. And that's the easiest way to tell a manual transmission gauge cluster from an automatic transmission gauge cluster. But this is also a USDM manual transmission gauge cluster. And you can tell that because you have the MPG gauge at the top instead of uh, your battery gauge or your um, temperature gauge or your fluid gauge. If a lot of people go with JDM, manual transmission gauge clusters in these cars, and it just doesn't really fit right because it obviously reads in kilometers an hour and stuff like that. And I really wanted to get as close as possible to OEM, which is why I went with a USDM OEM manual transmission gauge cluster. So Another really um, important thing to consider with these cars is the uh, the trim piece right here. This boot right here, this is pretty easy to find, but this plaque right here is really the hard piece to find. And that's the five speed shifter uh, pattern right there. And th you can't just stick this badge onto this panel. This is actually connected to this whole entire panel right here. So you have to find a five speed panel from a five speed manual car in order to get this. And we have that right here, so that's great. And then obviously we have the, uh, the OEM uh, shifter knob, shifter boot, um, one thing I didn't do on this car yet is a uh, manual transmission steering wheel. And you can tell that this is an automatic transmission steering wheel because of these shifter buttons, the down, and if you look back here, uh, the up shifter button right there as well. And uh, I, the only reason I didn't go with the manual transmission steering wheel yet is because they're really hard to find in good condition and I want a good condition steering wheel. So it will come to a vlog near you soon, but not yet. And then finally, 
Um, a very important uh, component with this manual transmission swap is the OEM clutch pedals right here because a lot of people will go with the cheap rubber uh, clutch pedals instead of these OEM metal ones and I really don't like that because I really think that this car should be as OEM as possible and these uh, clutch pedals really contrast with this footrest right here and basically the overall ethos of this car so had to go with the OEM clutch pedals in this car as well so um, let's hop back into the car. Let's see what else we can find in here. So another thing that is different with manual transmission cars as opposed to the automatic transmission cars is these buttons right here as well because you have your traction control off button and then you have your snow button right here. And obviously you have a snow button in your automatic transmission cars as well, but that snow button is just one really big button kind of like uh, kind of looking like this button right here as opposed to two small buttons in one slot right here so this right here you can only find from a manual transmission car and this is all in here and all wired up as well snow mode works traction control off works i have two traction control off buttons because i really like to rock traction control off in this car so it's cool to have two buttons so one more major component with the manual transmission swap on these is 300s at least in the interior is this shifter tunnel right here the transmission shifter tunnel and basically what that is is the hole in the uh, center console right here that allows for the shifter to come up into the cabin so the big difference between the manual transmission shifter tunnel and the automatic transmission shifter tunnel is that the automatic shifter tunnel is flat and flush with the surface of the car to where the manual shifter tunnel sits about an inch and a half higher than the automatic shifter tunnel does to make room for the w55 or whatever transmission you put in this car to sit upright and straight in the car like this and one more thing to take into consideration with the w55 transmission swap is that whenever you install it the shifter is always going to sit a little bit towards the left or the driver's side just like this one does right here and that's another way you can tell what kind of transmission swap you you're looking at in an is 300 this is a w55 55 and this one's angled a little bit towards the driver if it was like an r154 or a uh, get drag six-speed transmission it would just be straight up so that's another component to take into consideration so i'm sure a lot of you are probably wondering you know how did i swap this car into a manual because i told you guys before i don't have that much mechanical experience and this is a lot of work to get this type of job done so basically the way i swap this car into manual is that i bought a donor car to actually get all the components to swap this car into manual and basically what a donor car is is that it's like a wrecked or an undrivable version of this car right here and obviously not this specific car the car that i got for the donor car was a manual transmission from the factory lexus is 300 sedan that was basically wrecked from the front and the rear and had a lot of frame damage but all the components were still good in the car so i stripped all the components and i put them in this car right here but how did i strip all the components because i'm not the mechanic here so the way I was actually to get this swap done was um, with help of a friend of mine who's a really good mechanic. He has many years of experience in the industry and he helped me with a lot of the heavy line work on this car. Dropping the automatic transmission, putting in the new manual transmission, you know, helping with a lot of the wiring with the ECU and stuff like that and really did a lot of the heavy line work underneath the car on this thing to where I focused on the interior of this car, ripping apart the interior, cutting out the, uh, the shifter tunnel dropping the clutch pedal and really focusing on the interior so really my friend and I tag team this to get this done and we actually swapped this car into manual in a driveway we didn't have a shop we didn't have a lift we didn't have any of that fancy stuff we just did this the old-fashioned way with jack stands and um, it was pretty crazy and honestly I do not think that this manual transmission swap would be at all possible without the help of advanced garage because he helped me with a lot of the heavy line mechanical stuff throughout the process of this manual swap and I implore you all to go give his Instagram page a follow and the link in the description below and if any of you ever are stuck and need help getting a manual swap done on your IS300 or Sportcross I implore you to send me an email and we can work something out in terms of getting that done. Now the big question is it worth it to do a manual transmission swap on an IS300 or an IS300 Sportcross? Well in order to answer you that question I got to take you on a drive on this thing so stay tuned. So driving the manual Lexus IS300 Sport Cross. Um, so to 
begin answering my question, is it worth it to do a manual transmission swap? I think the first question you need to ask yourself is how you're gonna be using this car. Because if you're you know, in a city, in a place to where you're in traffic all the time and you don't wanna be shifting through the gears and blow out your clutch all the time, then maybe the automatic transmission is a better thing to stick with in terms of being a daily driver. But if you're talking performance and how the car actually drives, with the manual transmission, the manual transmission is a no-brainer in terms of doing a swap on these cars because the overall characteristics of this car with the manual transmission have been changed. I mean, this car went from a boring daily driver to a th fun, enthusiastic car that you could just, you know, throw around corners and have all the power you need, you know, throughout wh whatever power band you you're in. and. You know, I'm just getting onto the freeway right now. I'm going to do a little pull, and you guys are going to see, you know, this thing has a lot more power than this car did with an automatic transmission, and you guys will see that right now here. We're going to do a little pull on the highway, snow mode off. Yeah, so this thing has really nice power, I have to say. Now, from the factory, like I said before, this car was offered um, with 200 horsepower from the factory and about 220 pound-feet of torque. And when I did the manual transmission swap, I could tell right away that the power and torque figures went up significantly. At least 20 horsepower and 20 pound-feet of torque. And I believe that has to do with how much less the manual transmission weighs in this car than the automatic transmission did because the A650E transmission is about a 250 pound uh, transmission to where the W55 manual transmission is about 150 pounds. So you're losing 100 pounds right off the bat when putting in this transmission. This car got a lot more torquey as well. I mean, right now I'm at 2,500 RPMs, 35 miles an hour. You know, if I push on the gas, we're going. I mean, this thing has torque on for days. I mean, this isn't the type of motor that has a lot of horsepower. It's definitely more of a torquey motor, but wherever you're at in low RPMs, I mean, your car just has, or should I say this car, has the power to just get going. It doesn't get stuck. It doesn't bog out or anything like that. The torque definitely holds the power up on this car really, really well. And the torque factor definitely improved a lot with this manual transmission swap as well. And one thing I have to say about the W55 transmission in particular, and this is the reason why I went with the W55 swap, is that it shifts really smoothly. I mean, this thing feels like a Lexus. It feels like a smooth, nice daily driver car. This car doesn't feel compromised whatsoever. It's not like I gave anything up when getting rid of the automatic transmission. This thing still rides and retains all of the OEM characteristics of a Lexus. And that's another reason why I really like the W55 swap in this car. And um, another reason why I think the manual transmission in this car is phenomenal. But these cars were also offered with a dual mass flywheel whenever it, for the IS300 sedan manuals that came with the manual transmission from the factory. These cars came with a dual mass flywheel. And that dual mass flywheel, I have to say, really um, takes away from the power at the top end. Um, this car does not have a dual mass flywheel. This has a, um, a Fidenza lightweight flywheel. And basically, that just maximizes the performance of and power of what this car has right here. I have to mention the snow mode in this car works really well as an eco mode because whenever you press the snow mode in, it makes the clutch a lot less responsive and a lot more soft, a lot easier to shift into gears. And it also makes the car have a little bit less power. So you kind of use a little bit less gas when stopping and going and you know, that type of stuff. But actually the snow mode has gotten me out of trouble off road in the mud and stuff as well, because it just makes it to where the throttle response is a lot less and your wheels spin a lot less whenever you're in a sticky situation like that. So the snow mode is definitely really good in this manual transmission car. And to answer any of your guys' question, is it worth it to do a manual transmission? swap in one of these cars it is absolutely worth it because not only you're going to get so much better performance out of this car with a manual but the resale values on the used market are so much more higher 
for having a manual transmission. Yes, it may cost a few thousand dollars to do the manual swap in this car, but you're going to get all that money back on the resale side of things if you ever do decide this do decide to sell this car. So the final thing I wanted to go over with you guys about this manual swap sport cross is cost because with any project you're going to be doing, cost is going to play a significant factor of how you actually build your car. So for me, in parts alone, because I bought the full donor car, which had every manual transmission component for this car, it cost me $3,000 for that parts car back in early 2020. And in labor, you can expect to spend anywhere from 2,500 to five grand to get this thing actually swapped from automatic to manual transmission, depending on what transmission you go with. If you go with the 350Z transmission, it's gonna be a lot more labor because you have to get a bell housing adapter and do a lot more crazy out of the box Stuff, but for a W55, W58, R154, or get trag, you should really be looking in the realm from anywhere from 2,500 to four to five grand to actually get the labor done to get these cars swapped in the manual. So let's just say seven to eight grand all in getting these cars from automatic to manual transmission. And I think that's worth it because at the end of the day, the used resale value of manual transmission IS 300s and IS 300 sport crosses is already going through the roof and it's going to even get crazier. And I feel like these will be collector cars someday in the future. So I think that's a great place to leave off today's video in terms of the manual swapped Lexus IS 300 sport cross. This has been a really uh, anticipated video for me to film and I had a lot of fun filming this video today. So if you guys enjoyed it and you guys like the content you see on the JJ Vids channel, be sure to give me a like and subscribe and turn on the notification bell as well to always be notified for a new video for me. But with that being said, thank you everyone who shows support to the JJ Vids channel and I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.